<laughs> to, to the people that aren't in the squares, hello and welcome to Comedy Roulette. Um, if this is your first time joining us, there's only been two, so you haven't missed a lot. This is our second one. Um, very simple um, reason that I set this up. I tried to do streamed open mic and I wasn't very good at it. I like chatting, so I thought I'd set up something where I could chat and other people could do comedy and I could take all the credit. So here we are. So I've got an amazing panel today. Um, you can see um, next to me is the lovely ukulele queen, Jen Smith. I keep introducing her as the ukulele queen, so she will bring her ukulele every time I sing your song. Um, just below Jen in the square is the amazing Bristol legend that is Mark Olver. So if you've seen anything about any of the amazing belly laughs events that have been going on over the UK over lockdown, that is the man responsible. So if you loved it, praise him. If you didn't love it, it was nothing to do with him. And last but certainly not least is one of my absolute comedy idols, Katie Brandt, who um, is the literal Beyonce of the comedy world. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if you still know the choreography. Um, I won't ask unless this game goes really badly and it gets slow. But uh... Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. <laughs> I, I've had to stop going to weddings because they put single ladies on and perform a circle and, so like... and basically <laughs> clap until I, I enter the circle. To, and I can't remember any of it. And I've also had a baby since I did it. So I can't slut drop spontaneously. <laughs> I will, again. I will never forget it though. It was genuinely one of the best things I've ever seen. Um, I can't believe you haven't kept the choreo up. It's like at the end of Strictly where people are like, I think I'll dance for pleasure, you know? And Well, yeah, I mean, I had to go up and down stairs sideways for a fortnight after I did that. So it was, it was tough. But every year um, for the last few years, a, a company based in Tokyo has got in touch with my agent um, to ask if I will go out there for their New Year's Eve TV show in Japan and compete alive for votes from the viewing audience for uh, to compete against their premier Beyonce impersonator. <laughs> um, and I think that it is because um, based on the number of hits that it's had on YouTube, me doing this dance, which is like 30 or 40 million now. Or me. They, <laughs> wow. they, they think, I think, that I am Britain's premier Beyonce impersonator. <laughs> And that's all I do. And, and they could be probably based on those numbers, just for that one video, be forgiven for maybe thinking that. But um, I basically ask for a fee so massive uh, every year that they just go away. <laughs> one year they're going to call you bluff and you imagine, have to learn it again. <laughs> I think I've got, I've got it all ready to go. Like, that's my act. I mean, can you imagine? It's 10 years ago. You'd be amazing. <laughs> it would be amazing. Sorry, but you... You asked me to be on this show because I was told I was going to be on with the UK's premier Beyonce. <laughs> um, I went, bits, I, want, I, I don't want to do the show. And you were like, well, funny you should say that, Oliver. I know you're a massive, you don't like Beyonce, but you love Beyonce impersonators. And I was yeah. like, I love Beyonce impersonators. We've got the best one in the world. And I went, have you got the best one in the world? Can they prove it? Because I've heard there's a really good one in Japan who is better. <laughs> Well, you see, I just, uh, <laughs> just quietly clicking leave meeting. Yeah. <laughs> just, the, the longer Corona goes on, the least, the less work Katie gets, the more chance will definitely go to Japan. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen to catch me on a Tokyo-based TV talent show doing the Beyonce dance and ending up in hospital as a result you'll know this was a bad time for me. You're absolutely right. <laughs> or they finally honoured your one million your fee. fee yes. Or they match my fee. Yes. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't, um, we won't get to that. Last week, I think we got through about five of the bingo balls because the chat mm -hmm. was lit. There's no pressure, but, you know, it was... We, we had a good time. So I'm genuinely Oops. feeling a lot more confident with this bingo ball that I bought from Amazon than I was last week. I'm gonna. You've got to be masterful with it. You've got to really show it his boss. So I feel like I can yeah. do that. Uh, so this game is. This show is called Comedy Roulette. Yeah. Don't don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't make the same joke my dad did, Mark. Don't start us off on no, the wrong foot. Not a joke. It's not a joke. I, I do. I do a lot of work in TV shows. I do a lot of work behind the scenes on game shows, and you know, pointless. It's all about pointless. Deal or no deal is all about getting a deal or a no deal. I don't really understand how comedy roulette is all about a bingo thing. The roulette wheels were very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and the bigger ball was cheap. 
so that's how that happened um yeah that was my first question my dad had last week i was like did you enjoy it dad and he's like why is it comedy bingo it's like close chat night what's Bye. your what's your dad's name dave dave layton dave good work dave me and you dave i'm totally with you nailed it dave i blame the parents apart from that it's all right dave. don't give him ideas he already thinks he's the funny one in the family don't listen dad it's me <laughs> I'm the funny one. I am. <laughs> right. Okay. So we have 30 different categories. They're really weird. Some of them were sourced from Twitter. Just give you a sense of how weird they are. <laughs> um, I'm hoping we, well, do you know what? I was worried that we'd get duplicates from last week because there is just as good an odds apparently as getting the same ones exactly the same as they were last week because that is just maths. But um, you'll have different answers, won't you? And I was quite lazy and I didn't want to write it out again because I've written it all out by hand. So... And is this, like, is it competitive? Are we like, are we going for each other? <laughs> well, I don't know. How, how, do you feel aggressive, Mark? <laughs> yeah, yeah I do now. Okay, cool. Yeah. I feel um, like I'm going. I feel like I'm oh, going. That's, go. that's not my happy place. I like everyone to get along. <laughs> no, no. Have you ever heard those rumours about... Uh, you biting people, mock, yeah. <laughs> about, about mock the week in the past, that there was... Yes. Mock, proper scrapping yes <laughs> which is why i said if i ever get a big enough i'd be too scared to do mock the week <laughs> yeah I'm, proper scrapping i'm horrible though i'm terribly competitive and a bad loser so i just be pushing people <laughs> over at the bike <laughs> <laughs> and then all the audience would be like this is why we don't get women on emotional mm. hormonal <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you've all got a designated noise. I asked you to come up with one. Jen, what is your noise? Mark, what is your noise? Over! I love it! And Katie's going to have a quiet noise because her son's in bed. So, Katie, what's your noise? Oh, nice. And weirdly, Mark and Katie have changed places on my grid. So, you've got the wrong yeah. name of you. So, for anyone joining late, well, they're not going to know what the hell's going on. So, um... I think Mark shouted so much it disrupted the sort of environmental atmosphere. <laughs> <The space laughs> it disrupted time. <laughs> it was all going so well. Um, right, so I'm going to start spinning the wheel. If you have something to say, it can be a story, an anecdote, a song, if you um, are musically inclined, Jen, or... Can it be so a point? Yeah, if you want to make a point. Um, if it's... Can it be like just a piece of, you know, just a sort of, yeah, just yeah. to make a point? Yeah. Why not? Do your Miss World answers. Just get it out there. Just maybe, you know, no, much pettier and much, much more <laughs> trivial grievances than that. Oh, one of the categories is petty grievances. So, yeah, so. Very, very petty, like small, trivial things, but still worth saying. I want to hear them. I love the facts, and I don't know, they never get enough credit for this, but the board game Trivial Pursuits is a trivia game but it's actually called Trivial Pursuit. So they knew when they made it that it was trivial. So I think that's absolutely, I think change trivial pursuits <laughs> trivial grievances. I think <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to do to get a piece of pie then? Get everyone to agree with your bad take on something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. We have to make someone change their basic ideology for life. I mean, that sounds like just Christmas in the average household, doesn't it? It's perfect. We should I make this. I think this is how cults start, surely. We should make this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should be laughing, Katie, because he's trading under your name at the moment, or over your name, as it were. <laughs> he's oh, really? making these points That's with your hilarious. name on them. That's all <laughs> oh, right. If you come up with some really bad opinions, your name on them is Mark. Yeah, right. Katie's Mark, and Mark is Katie at the moment, <laughs> according to the names underneath. <laughs> Like, we would actually be this on that sw face switch app, though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, uncanny. Also, I'm hoping to get Put a beard on it. I'm hoping for that sweet, sweet Japanese Beyonce dollar. Well, <laughs> well you, you're you responsible, your though. Out. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> come on. Give it let's, Give it again. let's get to the balls. Okay. okay. Right. Get to the balls. Look at that, masterful. Oh, no, I've lost it. Um, right, and this is ball number 20, which is all about meeting famous people, which technically I suppose I'm doing now. And any any anecdotes, any stories you've got? 
Oh. Oh. Oh, I don't, oh um, it's a tie. Jen, you go first. I reckon we've got time for both. I like the same. I don't think it'll be a long one because it's, it's more of an anecdote than a comedy story. Um, basically, I mean, it's, it's not, it's a well-known fact that I have a bit of a thing for Greg Davis. He's, he's the only thing keeping me mired in bisexuality at this point, right? I had but a bet with I'm, myself how long it would take you to mention him. Um, well, but this is the thing, it's not about him. I want to point out I'm not one note and it's not all about Greg Davis. Okay. Because, let me tell you about the time I stopped Dick and Dom. <laughs> um, but so basically, they follow me on Twitter and I don't know whether it's just like a thing for their own safety and their own security. Because there was a point where we met them. There was a forum that was run by Dom's brother, Tim, which is a fact I should not know. <laughs> and a bunch of us all got together because they were up for a Children's BAFTA Award. So we all went to London. And How old were you? Was this hotel. like last year? Or... <laughs> went 20 something, 23, 24. And we all stood outside this hotel in London for 12 hours just so that we could talk to them and give them Christmas presents. Did they like that? Yeah. I mean, they, Dick was particularly hammered when he came out, so he was all over it. He was more than happy. I think he wanted to come with us, but Dom was dragging him off, which was a shit. <laughs> um, who the we? Oh, you, you keep saying we like this is a really yeah. not <laughs> weird way. Like, like, how big is this group? A, a group of spirited young ladies, that's all it was. Well, then maybe it's, it's, if you we did. We met on their forum. About six, seven of us? It was a big enough... I did, um, I did a TV show with the, a band called The Wanted about 10 years ago when they were big Love them. It was like a big year. And there were lots of... We followed them around filming with them for a bit and there was a group of young women, well, sort of late teens, early 20s, of six or seven. But they would be every... We noticed they would be everywhere The Wanted were. And they would talk about them as if they were all, like, friends and they would go out. <laughs> and they'd act like having to wait outside. They'd be like, oh, it's just really annoying. We've been here for, like, hours and... Like, we don't know where we're going next, so... <laughs> and then, like, the next day, I'd see them, they, they were there, and again, yeah, they were outside the club they were in. Like, they stayed out there until 2 a.m. And then just sort of go home. But I think they must talk to each other, like, oh, God, that night we had out with the Wanted. Oh, yeah, do you remember when we were at that bar? I, I think there must... Was there a sort of collective delusion where you sort of thought you were with them, or did it not go that far for you? I don't think it went that far but I'm like, not using you of you know I was doing the shocked face there at 2 a.m. but we were easily out till 2 a.m. because they could <laughs> see him late. <laughs> but I'm not staying out till two to watch a celebrity at Rangers. Do you know the Irish uh possibly two times, maybe three times your revision winner from the eighties, Johnny Logan? No. Can't say no. I can't say two. So uh, John Sorry, Logan, being photobombed. Uh, Johnny Logan uh, won Eurovision, and he's quite a kind of... Uh, he was a big star in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, and I do the warm-up for Pointless. And uh, when you do Pointless Celebrities, uh, you do sometimes get someone in the audience who will be... They've, they've heard or followed on Twitter. There's a girl who, every time a casualty cast member gets on Pointless... She'll be in the audience to watch the casualty episode. We did the Johnny Logan. Johnny Logan was on a Eurovision special of Pointless. Um, there were 20 independent Johnny Logan fans in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he feels so achievable, doesn't he? I can see why you go for a celeb at the sort of nadir of their professional career. They feel achievable wouldn't they yeah oh, you know what? that's a good idea isn't it yeah. don't stalk someone yeah really dick and dom obvious. they'd love to hear from you now don't go a-list yeah <laughs> okay. did you is was that your story mark or did you have something else well no i've actually because i because i do quite a lot of uh tv warm-up so i've sort of met lots of different people but i have however uh and i don't know how jenny's going to feel about this but i have worked with dick and dom Oh, did they mention okay. Jen? Did they talk about me? <laughs> no. Uh, all of, uh, One day. Now, if you're a dick, so this would be getting on for 10 years ago, and I can't remember what the show was called, but it was basically filmed in um, a vintage fairground nice. music in Cornwall, in, in Lawnston on the edge I of I believe Cornwall. that's Hoopla, Mark. What's it called? I believe it's Hoopla. 
Hoopla! It was hoopla! And, <laughs> Told um, you, it wasn't lying. <laughs> we spent... Were you there, Jen? Is this what no. you say? <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> Four weekends, uh, all day Saturdays, all day Sundays, in a vintage fairground museum. <laughs> <laughs> we um, with no uh, no mobile signal, it was one of the the most difficult mo- uh, warm up jobs I've ever had to do. Um, yeah. Because every set, the kids, we'd have to move the kids outside of the museum, where I'd have to entertain them while they reset the um, cameras, oh, bring them back in. <laughs> oh. Oh, one of Nick and Dom is nicer than the other. And I can never remember which way round it goes. I, I <laughs> think one is shyer than the other. Oh, that's no, nice. Yeah. When, no, when the shyer one is drunk, he's extremely friendly. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep it light. It's not even eight o'clock. Do, do, they, <laughs> do they stand left and right like ants and deck? Like they never drop a dick. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to make it a bit easier for you. <laughs> never dumb and dick unless you ask nicely. <laughs> well, I... Um, my friend used to live on the same street as Karis Matthews when we were about 13 or 14. And we used to hang around outside her house like weirdos. And um, we'd go after school and we wouldn't ring the doorbell or anything because we were respectful. But we were three teenagers constantly hanging out outside her house. And um, one weekend I read in the News of the World, like some shrewd PR. She must have told them, oh, there's these weird kids that sit outside the house. So I opened up the paper <laughs> and there was this story about how basically Welsh fans were like laying siege on Karis Matthews' house. And me and my friends were like, surely this can't laying be true siege. because we know because we're there every day. Oh, fuck, <laughs> it's us. <laughs> <laughs> I so, love you guys all say to each other, surely we'd have like, seen we, it. We that was them. <laughs> we're always yeah, there. <laughs> It was so it was mortifying because we were genuinely puzzled. We were like, surely they are they are we doing this in shifts? Or like some shrewd PR person had got hold of the story, thought this will make nice coverage for Karis Matthews <laughs> and sold it in a fair play. It, also, what I don't, what I like about it, it isn't just that you were like we didn't spot them. I imagine you also <laughs> just were losers. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who do that? Like, come on. <laughs> They're yeah. not respectful like us. <laughs> She's just trying to live a life, guys. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's anyone who I don't think there's anyone who I would stalk. I don't think I don't think so. I, I the only time I've ever been incredibly uh, like sort of shy when meeting a famous person was uh, was Billy Bragg, and I needed mm. to get. I needed to get um, one of the producers to introduce me to Billy Bragg because I, I couldn't have done it myself. I couldn't have walked up to him and said, Hi, Billy, I'm a really big fan. But I wouldn't. Yeah. I, I, I don't say that, though. I definitely isn't. Oh, Billy, I'm a really big fan. Like, no, that's, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what you do. I don't feel like you would have gone for that, though, really, in the moment, or would you? <laughs> oh, I, well, this is why I needed someone. <laughs> <laughs> Because you either think that's option one, yeah. Is, I believe I'm a really big fan. But option two is almost lying and pretending you don't like them. Like, yeah. Oh uh, really yeah. Cool. Sorry. Who are you? Yeah. Like, mm. Well, I, just, I yeah. might have heard of you somehow. Oh, I'm, yeah. It's always yeah. a dilemma. <laughs> the thing about meeting famous people is that they're always smaller than you think you, they're, they're going to be. But you mustn't ever, you mustn't ever say that. No. <laughs> you'd be amazed at how many people just blurt. God, you're a lot smaller than I thought you'd be. Like, don't. It's always <laughs> thanks. However, it's a or small a celebrity is. Yeah, or you, they just, they will always be smaller than you thought they are. But don't ever say it. Okay. That's my one bit of advice. From the That's premier, to notice, yeah. UK's premier Beyonce tribute act don't is giving us yeah, stunning advice. Like, exactly. Actually, I have met Jay Z, but I'm, so I'm getting closer to Beyonce. I'm getting closer. Have you? I have. That was like you. I, that was the only person I've ever gone squeaky and quiet with because I've met a few people and I've managed to hold it together most of the time. But with Jay Z, I just squeaked. But you the had something to with, say. Just said he'd never seen me like that before in his life. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just crack down the moves. <laughs> was, this a meet, it, was this a meet like? Vix met Kerry Matthews and Jen. <laughs> or did you actually meet him? 
I actually met him backstage in his backstage area at a gig and then we went in his fleet of escalades to no. a hotel and we had drinks. Wow. Oh, you, yeah. you, you didn't even ring your bell. You had like the best celebrity story <laughs> ever. Oh, I just you with Jay-Z, you, you just story. went... No. Well, I sort of thought I could say these things if, like, you know, it's appropriate, but it's a bit of a dickhead move to just leech that in. Yeah, let's like, talk about Jay-Z. dick and job. <laughs> I only say it because it's the only person I think I've ever really lost I've the ability to speak when I've met. I mean, seeing that Katie has now opened up uh, the floodgate, <laughs> um, I was once in a lift with Whoopi Goldberg. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. I'd probably be pretty quiet myself if that happened. But did you talk to her? She's amazing. No, well, I, do you know what? It was really weird because uh, it was in the old um, London studios uh, in Waterloo, and uh, there's quite a lot of floors. And I was in a lift, um, and I was on my own. And then it went. I'm glad I didn't fart. And then as it went down, I reckon um, she'd be fine with that. Floor, she seems cool. Well, the boy Whoopi, yeah. And Whoopi, and, Whoopi and two people got in, and then we had quite a long descent down to the bottom where I didn't talk to her, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm in a lift with Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, genuinely, no more than 20 minutes later, um, I was in a writer's room of a couple of other comics, uh, including Adam Hills, and she knew Adam Hills, and Adam Hills brought her into the writer's room to say hello to us all, but I had this weird moment of like, oh yeah, I've literally just spent a few minutes with you in a lift. So mm-hmm. we all gave each other a look like, yeah, we know each other. <laughs> we go way back, way back. <laughs> no. You didn't walk up and go, hello, what's up, we're ready to <laughs> You look much smaller in your life. <laughs> Anyone remember who Brian Jacks is? Say that again. Does anyone remember who Brian Jacks is? No. Uh, Brian Jacks was, on, uh, was a judo player yes. a judo and was uh, on famous for more famous for being on the TV show Superstars than he was. <laughs> Absolutely, right? When I was about five and I was living in Basingstoke. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just stop you before you answer? You can. You can. He went Jay-Z. I went Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Are you kidding? Wouldn't he go in Brian Jacks? I'm, I'm going to up you with Brian Jacks because of the interaction I had with Brian Jacks, right? Okay. This is why this is going to work. Cut to the so chase because we we've only got I one would... ball out. Come on. This better be five. banging. <laughs> and in classic Basingstoke parenting style, we were all in this big community hall and our parents were all about smoking fags and just like ignoring their kids for a bit. And Brian Jacks is on stage demonstrating his judo skills. And he asked for volunteers from the audience. And, of course, all the boys were just like, yeah, yeah, I want to do a bit of judo. And I was getting really pissed off because no girls were putting their hands up. And I was like, yeah, I can take, I can take this fella, whoever he is, and put my <laughs> hand up. Brian Jacks was beside himself that a girl had volunteered for it. So I went up on stage, and he did this thing where he said, right, throw me. So I went to go and throw Olympian Brian Jacks. And he threw himself. And I remember being so angry, thinking, I can bloody take this man. What the hell is he playing at? <laughs> Let's go but again. I Brian Jack, and he gave me um, a signature thingy for it. But I forgot his name for the next, like, decade. So I told a bunch of people that I judo thrown Bruno Brooks. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I can absolutely take Bruno Brooks, to be totally fair. <laughs> 61-year-old radio DJ Bruno Brooks. <laughs> Right, we're going back to the balls. <laughs> okay. Because we just did an ever decreasing circle of Z lists. We are circling the core of the earth on that. Mate, way. I got a whole raft of Z listers. <laughs> right. Okay. Number 18, and it's online dating. Ooh. Ooh. I think. Oh. Yes. Mark Olver, no. what would you like to say? <laughs> I think I <laughs> must have gone on one of the earliest in online dates, internet dating uh, ever, because I went on a, an internet date in 1997. Is the internet even wow. a bit <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, I know, I know. Now, I was 18, and um, we had uh, a computer in our house in the spare room that was connected to the inter- to the internet, you know, the kind of dial-up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had, there were these early chat rooms, and at 
I used to sort of go into chat rooms. There was a sort of early version of it where you would just see text scroll yeah. up in different colours with a name um, on AOL. So they had these chat rooms. And I went into one one night and I was sort of being... I, I would often sort of bait people and be quite annoying on purpose. And there was someone in there who was finding it all quite funny. And so we moved to what you could call a private chat room where you would just chat with one other person. I mean, it's all very basic. I mean, it looked like you'd sort of sketch it on an A4 pad, you know. Um, no pictures or anything. No way to get a picture from your camera onto a computer. You know, like, there was just none of that. Um, and so we started chatting on these private chat rooms. And then we exchanged email addresses after a couple of weeks. And then he started emailing, we started emailing each other. And then the suggestion came, this sort of, the growing anticipation was coming, that we would talk on the phone. Um, and so we started talking on the phone. Like, I mean, we'd never met, like, nothing. And then, and then uh, he said, I've got a couple of tickets for a concert at Wembley um, for the Fugees. Uh, nice! They, yeah, he said, do you want to come with me? I love them. So I was like, um, yeah, okay. And so I sort of agreed to do this. And I said, how will I get home? We lived about a half-hour drive from Wembley. Um, and uh, he went, oh, I'll drive you home after. And I agreed to all this. And it didn't occur to me to tell anyone about any of this until the after, at all, uh, the afternoon I was going, where I just suddenly said to my dad, oh, um, by the way, I've met someone on the internet and I'm going to a concert with him. Right? And he um, and it's like, well, you've met someone on the internet? It's like, what, what does that even mean? Like, what? Um, and, uh, and he said, how are you getting home? And I said, oh, well, he says he's going to drive me. And my dad was like, OK, thanks for telling me. And off I went. And it oh was only God. again that I thought, um, this could be really dangerous. <laughs> like this, we didn't. And the worst thing was, right, after all this time, I turned up and we'd agreed to meet outside the tube station by Wembley. And we walked up and, and we clocked each other before it, it was really time to speak. And we could both see in each other's eyes immediately at the same moment that neither of us fancied the other one. Ah. <laughs> and it was like that moment, you know, where you sort of, you know, in a split second, don't you, yeah. really? And um, there was nothing wrong with him. It's like, you know, I was nothing wrong with me. We were perfectly all normal, average looking people. But they're just immediately just like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, so we watched the concert and then he drove me home and I never saw him or spoke to him again. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> you didn't even want to be friends after all that investment. You just no, like, nah. it was so weird. It wasn't like he was angry. It was just like done. It was this not strange. <laughs> Did he not even thing. try for a cheeky snog just, just to see? No, it was like, it was literally like we were brother and sister. It was the most... <laughs> Honestly, I have I had more chemistry in the room with like with Eamon Holmes than I did with this man. Like genuinely, like I mean, I had more chemistry with average people. Like it was just really odd. It'd be it's very like, shady about Eamon Holmes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting. I've been sitting on this ever since you went to see the Fugees, or hmm. said you went to see the Fugees. So uh, I'm just going for this. Right, uh, okay. Wish me luck, everyone, because. Uh, this is a joke that's been brewing for uh, a couple of minutes. Can I just um, can I just ask you if you and this guy who went to see the Fuji's only went one time? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> kidding us! I'm not sure it was his jokes. Wait, but well done, well done. <laughs> was, it, was that the Fuji's? Was that a Wycliffe thing? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. It works. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. That's exactly yeah, it. I was, I was ab absolutely uh, less concerned about the Did you the listen to any of the story? Uh, or were you just like, got... this is a Is it accurate? That's yeah. the most important thing. <laughs> Google, Google Fuji's one time. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> one time. And right. That's going to be an early prototype because at that time I knew that even there were still dating agencies in the town where I lived where you had to go in and write a paper application and then they would go through their filing cabinet and find you a match themselves and phone you up like that. Like, like so people I'm pretty care sure about that's... each other's personalities. Like... Sorry? <laughs> like people care about each other's personalities. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Was he also 18? Was he like just... No, like, he was like 23 or 24, I think. I was really worried when that was going. <laughs> Sorry? 
it wasn't massively creepy. Oh no, it wasn't creepy. No, 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 no. There was nothing creepy or horrible about it. It was weird. It was just. It was. It was very funny. We got on very well, and then it was just a sort of odd. Oh, you, oh no. Yeah, but I but I do think um, it was it was quite it's quite a nice memory. But I do think it's got to be one of the earliest internet dates, right? Yeah, I definitely. Think, For sure. I really hope that that guy is watching this. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh shit! I thought we got on really well. I thought <laughs> never you're the one me. that got away. Yeah. <laughs> I saw her, and I, I hope he tells this anecdote where he goes, "Yeah, you know when you meet someone and you see them from a distance and." You automatically know that you really fancy her. You just know. <laughs> that woman needs to be my wife. Like. <laughs> and he, he watches you on TV now, Casey, and just yeah. wistfully goes, oh, I could have been the one. I could have been a Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well if you are watching, then I would just like to thank you now for being a very nice and gentlemanly date and driving me home very safely and just being a nice guy. So and not a murderer. And well not done. a murderer. Thank you for thank not being a murderer. That's how low the car is in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, when did you remember what month this, uh, this date was? My memory is that it was sort of probably around spring. You got okay, the Jeffrey so, in. <laughs> do you, um, do okay. you think this? Do you think that this guy? Yes, go on, go on. Was, was waiting for you, and when you disappeared, he thought that she was just gone till November. Okay. Oh God! <laughs> if we're going to talk about perfect gentlemen, though, <laughs> was, that, was that right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Was that reference right? Was that one? Yes, yeah. That's yeah. a Wyclef. That's a Wyclef song, technically, I think. Well done. Lauren Hill was in the Fugees, wasn't she? She certainly was. And Lauren Hill is in uh, genuinely my, one of my top three favourite films of all time. And what is that? Sister Act 2. Uh, any, anyone want to have a guess? Sister Act. Genuinely my top three favourite films of all time. Lauren Hill is in Sister Act 2. I got it. I knew it. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. That, is a, that was that. one of the best roles. You should all go yeah. watch it, but not now because we've got to. We're, we're rolling this ball, damn it! <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> we'll come back to that though. I'm a big Sister Act fan. It's been very Whoopi Goldberg theme tonight, hasn't it? <laughs> Number twenty-three, and it is Petty Grievances. It's the one we all wanted. <laughs> oh, that's what the crowd wants. <laughs> oh, Bridget, want to go first? So, are you? Are you um, hold on. Over, uh, do, do, when we talk petty grievances, are we talking, like, problems with specific people, or are you talking, uh, sort of, like, problems with the world? I don't really understand what Del the word... It's deliberately vague. It can be whatever you want. What really oh, makes you angry? Because, like, well, no, I tell you my problem. I tell you my problem, and I don't want to undermine the formats. Um, I don't. I don't see any grievance I've ever had with anyone as petty. So your petty say, grievance is with my term on my own game. Yeah, no, 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 no. If I've got a grievance with your term, mate, I'm properly pissed off with it. I'm not. <laughs> it's like it's like when people say something is a guilty pleasure. I'm like, I think you'll find I have absolutely no guilt about this whatsoever. Mate. <laughs> right, can I just raise a petty grievance here? Because guilty pleasures is actually ball number 22, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't like petty, I don't like guilty pleasures. I don't <laughs> petty, if I have got a problem with someone, that is not petty. That is the most important thing mm -hmm. uh, in the world. Have you got a legitimate so, uh, issue to share then? Is that what you'd like to share instead? <laughs> <laughs> Send your therapy uh, session. Yeah. <laughs> How am I, but this would be the problem with that is that this that would be a really dark ball to pull out where it's just like, oh, uh, all the three <laughs> legitimate issues. <laughs> <laughs> it would be covered under ball twenty nine, <laughs> burning I'm grudges, more, perhaps. It's some issues to come out today. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a grievance they consider petty? Otherwise, it's all what, mine, uh, <laughs> mine is, I don't know. Is it, is it a grievance? Um, it's the fact that hotel breakfasts don't finish at, 12, at midday. That is that's fair. That's, that's, that's legit. Big. That's not petty. 
that's just a genuine customer service issue. I get very angry when people raise what I think are petty grievances with me. And then I become, <laughs> I become extremely enraged. Like it's not so, like I, it's, I get quite judgmental about other people's grievances. I once had a neighbour who was so petty about the way we all parked our cars, her immediate neighbours. And, and because <coughs> we weren't from the town, she felt that her daughters, when they came to visit her, ought to be allowed to park where we parked if they wanted to, because she made it very clear to me that we they were born there. And we were, <laughs> she came round to, to knock on my door to say... Like, She's got a lamp down his right. Like a bird right door, to those faces. She, was like, she had one of those little faces angry, and she just was like, is that your car? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> the one outside my house. Yes, yes. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, and she was like, she made it very clear to me. She was very explicit. She said, well, my daughters will need to park there. They always park there. The lady who lived here before didn't have a car, and my daughters were born here. So <laughs> you're new to it. So, when, and I was like, but when am I, how am I supposed to know when your daughters are coming? Mm. And she was like, well, you just need to find somewhere else to park. But then the other one was Forever. the lady opposite had asked <laughs> us to park slightly away from our house um, the other way because she couldn't reverse her car out confidently without coming into our car. So then I was like, well, um, I said, well, actually, the lady opposite asked us to park slightly off because she's worried about it. And she was like, yeah, well, do you know what? That doesn't even matter because she's in hospital. <laughs> what street was this? Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't make that for very long. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> so I won. Okay, let's face it. I we all know how that lady votes last year. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I actually, she's one of the few people in my life who I've shut the door in her face. Amazing. Which I did. Yeah. Wow. Jim Brister had a story like this last week about neighbours. There's a there's a general theme so far yeah. in these. Like, what? Sounds like a dreadful human being. Yeah. Awful. Well, all neighbour disputes are petty, essentially, aren't they? I mean, that's the thing. That's the beauty of the neighbour. People have lost entire fortunes debating over mm. like, like hedges where, and hedge. stuff. Yeah. People go nuts. People go genuinely nuts about neighbour disputes, and they're always so petty. That's the joy of them, I think. But Mark's but point is, it's not petty, is it? It's it's real yeah. life. It's weird that we live in a society where, so I live in a uh, terrace house. And I'm looking outside of my window now. And we live in a society where I take responsibility for one side of my fence, but not the other. That's weird. <laughs> when you think about that, you look at me, and I'm looking at my garden, I'm going, couldn't care less about left, but right, that is all mine. It's mine. All, all mine. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> People are weird. <laughs> My um, ex-mother-in-law is pretty good for petty grievances in that, because we're still Facebook friends, because she never did anything to me, to be certainly fair to her. Has she, just has just it's a dickhead. When, when did she, when, like, you are constantly slagging your ex-husband off on video, generally all over town. How she, she does not... know that he deserves it. Oh, Come right, on. Then. I don't slag off any other exes, because they were all above reproach, right? But She's taken she's so aside good. if she's still following you. <laughs> Well, this this is my point, right? You said she was on his grave. <laughs> she, I did. She wishes every single person in our family happy birthday on Facebook, right? Aww. Without fail, cousins, second cousins, whatever. She's got three children: two sons and a daughter. The oldest son and the daughter wishes them happy birthday every year. My ex-husband never wishes him anymore and i've gone back and checked and you can date it to when we got divorced that she stopped wishing him happy birthday he doesn't deserve happy birthdays not from his own not mother <laughs> that's oh, how I'm bad not. he uh. is <laughs> she's getting her own back slowly but surely she's telling yeah. everyone that he turned it's her game it's psychological gay. warfare <laughs> <laughs> i agree to this that i was going to end up Liking someone's ex mother in law more than someone's ex neighbour. That's quite nice. <laughs> yeah, you never know where it's going to go. Do you? On their heads. <laughs> right, we've got time for one more ball. Amazingly, 40 minutes has already passed. This keeps wow. happening. Well, so good. I loved it. 
Have we got time for one more Whoopi Goldberg story from Mark? That's a big question. Always oh, oh. Whoopi Goldberg. I, well, it. you've got a Whoopi Goldberg story, Vix, haven't you? So you could join him in that one. We don't need to talk about that. Um, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if this is six or nine. So let's see which one we like best. So either oh. a lie that's caught you out or hotels, which we've sort of already covered with hotel breakfast. So does anyone feel strongly about whether it's a six or a nine? So what's the other one? What was the first one? Um, a lie that's caught you out. A lie that's caught you out. Oh, I've got a ho- I've got another hotel story. Well, let's go with that then. Nine it is. A lot of time in hotels. So over there you go. I'm keeping in with the form. Thank you very much. Um, so I I spent a lot of time in hotels. And I want you to tell me if I made the right decision here and did the right move here. Okay. So I'm checking into a hotel about five years ago. Um, it's the hotel connected to South Mims service station on the M25. I don't think we're all aware of South Mims service station. It was a day's in. Katie, Ooh. happy with that? Premium. Um, oh, I know, because I've weed behind a wheelie bin. <laughs> In the car park of that very hotel. <laughs> wow. At about memories. two in the morning. Because <laughs> I think, as anyone who's done their share of gigging in, around the country tends to be familiar with South Bims because it just it's that one just of the first one when you get to the M25 when you've done something up the nor- up north, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And so I was um, so I was checking in. Um, there was a woman uh, pissing behind a wheeling bit, but I <laughs> She looked like Beyonce. <laughs> yeah. Into you know, weirdly, Dick and Don were dressed as a wheelie bit, and she didn't realise. Um, so That's some pinky shit. Into, <laughs> went into the hotel. I went into the reception, and there was no one there. Um, and it was late. I, I was doing some work in L Street the next day. I'd come from North, so I was really late. Two a.m., half two. No one there, so I want to check in, can't find anyone. I walk all the way around the hotel, can't find anyone. Um, I, I, I shout, I do the sort of polite, hello, 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 where you, sort of, you don't want to be rude, but you're, excuse me, excuse me, like that. You just gradually get louder. No one answers. I go around again, no one there. It Literally, it's taking 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get into my room. And it's already late. And so I go around the back and I see a staff-only door. So I push it and it opens. I go, hello, nothing. Hello. So I go in and I go into the office. There's no one there. As I'm leaving, I look behind the door and the receptionist is sat there watching her iPad with headphones in, oh, but, yeah. asleep, but asleep. Oh, God. <laughs> She's got the headphones on. She's fast asleep. She's watching something. And I feel at that moment that I cannot, like, because look at this face. I cannot, like, this is Nick. <laughs> Waking up seeing this. So I, Why would you have what? got that close to her? <laughs> well, because I'd be like, oh, no, no, no. hello, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> From a distance at first, it, I was all, I was going hello, and she was nothing. So I'd have to prod her. But so um, I decided to myself, well, how difficult can it be to chat <laughs> to a hotel? <laughs> like this is not this. Is not, like I reckon I could nail this. Um, so I went to reception. Um, I found the booking book. I found my name. Um, <laughs> I found the key, and the key was like wasn't a credit card key. It was like a proper key key. So I thought I don't even have to do that. So I, was getting, I was getting myself. <laughs> up, and then four blokes came in. Did you check them as well? <laughs> you look like you're robbing the place. Well. Yeah. Well, you're like behind the counter going, "No, I don't work here." <laughs> It's not what it looks like. Yeah, but but that's weird. Like, it's weird to, to, to not work there, but to be checking yourself in. So I thought, well, I figured that out and check myself in. I can check them in as well. So I checked, 
I sold them a couple of crap um, bags of crisps. Uh, <laughs> I uh, got them all sorted, took their cash, left it under the thing. Oh, um, honest. Took, uh, snuck out, went to bed, and no one ever knew. So uh, you've worked there ever since. You did a shift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was once sacked from a hotel job because they were, I was caught sleeping on the to- floor of the toilet. Oh my god, was it? Was it? <laughs> Yes, yeah, stay nights. Nice. <laughs> no, the overlap is incredible. I used to do the breakfast shift, so I had to be there from it was four AM till one PM and uh, I would take breakfast up on um you know, room service and then I'd set up for lunch and then go. But uh, I was so tired all the time because I was going out every night. It was just terrible. And I did just I just used to go, lie on the toilet floor and just go to sleep. And <laughs> I, I did get away with it for quite a long time and then the Patrice I had this really sort of suave French boss who was disgusted by me. Disgusted. <laughs> uh, and he just I mean, banged just, the door open. Uh, and I remember just lying there looking up like this. You should the be the ladies. <laughs> and it was like, I'll get my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, also, how beautiful is it to have a moment <laughs> where someone's disgusting you is absolutely <laughs> 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 Away from and I even, this is what I remember. This is what I remember about it. His disgust was so complete and so degrading. <laughs> I remember being not having taken my makeup off from the night before, and it was all kind of mascara caked <laughs> over here. And as I left, he just looked at me, and I thought he was going to say something nice, like you know, I'm sorry it hasn't worked out or whatever. And all he did is he just went, "You have something." Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> lethal! <laughs> you have something dirty. Wow. Oh, and then that was well. the last I ever saw of him. Oh. Disgusted. He was disgusted. Wow. I love it. That's... I always think of him. You have, whenever I look at myself in the mirror and it's not, you know, <laughs> I'm looking, I just think of Patrice. You have something. What would Patrice dirty, is big in your face? Dirty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, what, yeah. A, what a story to finish on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not very upbeat. But everything was fine in the end, kids. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I worked in many other hotels. <laughs> Why? It wasn't for you. It was a trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, make money. <laughs> that's your fault. It's four a.m. until one p.m. It was that's a bad shit. That's a shit. Five pounds sixty an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I wasn't sorry to see it go. No. I went to work in an ice cream shop next. That was much better. Oh, oh I would have mentioned. Yeah. Testing it all though, just making sure it still tasted the same. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Quality yeah. control. Well, I like, I like well, my to cheek. The <laughs> all of these places. Sorry, say again. But I fell asleep. But all of these places. <laughs> yeah. You walk into the ice cream shop, and Patrice is just there going. Chocolate <laughs> <laughs> chip cookie all over you. <laughs> yeah. He comes to my gigs and sits in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Dirty. I dated a boy once who his family owns an entire suite of ice cream shops in Tenby. They were like the Tenby Mafia. So that was the biggest perk of dating him is whenever we went to Tenby, it was like wall-to-wall free ice cream as far as the eye could see. Nice. <laughs> Not a bad perk. Sad I lost that one. His family were rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't date any more men, Jen. They're not for, they're not for you. <laughs> Yeah. Hotel trade, not for Casey, then not for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best you can say about your dating career with men. Yeah, my ice cream shop, it was nice. Like, I haven't been too successful with women yet either because the one internet date that I've been on, she basically stalked me for six months. <laughs> She's probably watching now. Yeah, probably. Hi. Hi. Please leave me alone. Yeah, that hasn't helped. Whatever we've just done there. Hasn't <laughs> we're not to be, I promise. We were trying to sort of upswing the, the energy, but we've gone down an even darker path, if that were possible. I massively, I massively zoned out because I tried to do the impossible thing, and I thought we could finish this on a high if I could work out a Fuji's pun that also connected ice cream in Tenby. But if I'm honest, I think... Come I'm on, Mark. You can do I it, mean, Mark. I mean, is pretty... Uh, mm. is pretty low. Uh, killing me softy. Yeah, oh, killing, killing me Mr. Softy. Softly. Killing me Mr. Softy. Scoot. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to go. I've got to go now. Before I get, 
mic drop. drop the, right. Drop the mic. <laughs> this has been amazing. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I've had a lot of fun. You've been Jen Smith, Katie Brandon Markov with the wrong names. I've been Vic Slate, and we're going to do this again next week. And um, yeah, have a lovely evening. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.